Hi everybody, Levi Clay here and I'm back again to do another quick little lesson video. This one is looking at uh, Everybody Loves You by Andy Wood. This was actually the monthly, one of the monthly transcription challenge in my Patreon group. So all of those guys have gone away and they've transcribed this solo and a bunch of other cool little Andy Wood things. And now they are sort of submitting things to me and I'm giving them feedback on their transcriptions and the like. So if that is something that you would like to be involved in, check out the Patreon link in the description below and you can join us over there for all the fun games and transcription learning. I uh, would also like to suggest that you take a leaf out of Glenn Fricker's book and, or do as Glenn tells you, get it done. Hit that subscribe button. I really do appreciate it. So anyway, let's take a look at this video. So yeah, the transcription's already done. Let me hit play on it so you can hear what it sounds like. And I'm doing it this way because uh, the way CD Baby works means that if I play Andy's music on YouTube my video will get a copyright strike. Obviously, we don't want that. So it should sound like this. So nothing too out of the ordinary let's break it down let's see what the thought process behind this is so the first step in learning this was for me to really understand what is happening harmonically so andy's playing you know the tune is in a I've put these chords in above and the reason we have to understand that is because when we play a lick like this one uh, we're playing a lick like that it's kind of important to understand the the inside sound so we're able to play the outside sound and understand it understand it as being outside so if we just take a look at this bar Nothing in beat one. Beat two, we have a trill from the root onto the flat nine. Now this is, a, there's a lot of chromaticism in this line, I'm not going to lie. Fingering-wise for that, I would recommend the first finger, obviously, first and second for the trill. Hit the uh, the G note with your little finger. One, two, and three for the next notes, and then end on the first finger for the first note in the second bar. But in terms of yeah, vocabulary, what I'm thinking here is it's still very much A, right? This note is played, we chromatically embellish it, and then we play what's well, the flat seven of the chord. Not a bad note at all. Uh, and then we have some chromatic embellishment to approach or to dress up the fifth of the chord, E. And then if we look at what happens in this next bar, it's a similar principle. He plays the fifth. And that's just a chromatic embellishment to get us to C sharp, the third of the chord. And then... And he loves that, loves to play a bit diminished. So... In terms of what I'm thinking, in terms of learning and, and stealing vocabulary like this, we've got a chord tone, chromatic embellishment leading to a chord tone, another chord tone, um, uh, chord tone, these are both chord tones, and then here we offshoot and play a little bit of an outside sound, we play some descending diminished. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, that line would probably sound better to my ears if I played. Because that sounds like an A chord, but Andy opted for a D there. So yeah, when learning a line like that, or trying to get a line like this into your vocabulary, in my opinion, I feel the best way to do that is to really understand where the line is coming from. So if we just jump back to me, just so I can show you my neck while I'm doing it. The 
genesis of the line is very clear in my mind and that's a big kind of deciding factor on on how i finger something and how i think about things all right let's jump back so now you have this uh, another great line you have one two Now, again, a lot of chromaticism, right? But if we really look at it, this is a chromatic approach note to this, which is a chord tone. Chromatic approach note, chord note. Chromatic approach, chord. Chromatic approach, chord. Chromatic approach, chord. Chromatic approach, chord. Chromatic approach. You see what I'm getting at here? And now we're walking up the neck, walking up the scale, or however you want to think about it, to get us to E, which again is the fifth of the chord. So while this chromatically, uh, or is a lot of chromatic notes, it's still a, a line which is derived from the chord you're playing on, rather than playing, you know, a boring scale. We're thinking of the chord, we're playing the sound of the chord, but with a little bit of colour. Now, of course, you can finger this in many ways. I've just gone for the, the obvious way of doing things. Um, and I'm thinking fingers one and two, so, and then maybe, there's actually, I corrected this, there's a little slide in there, but for the sake of learning and understanding, I just decided to write it straight. So, let's jump back here, and I'll just show you the fingering for that. So, again, I'm thinking of the triad. Fingers one and two, fingers one and two, and then four and three, and then continuing. So, um, so that makes sense to, to my brain. All very much an A chord. And then he plays this really cool. Now that's a real ear twister, right? Why is that an ear twister and why is it important that we understand the harmony? So this this particular lick, the first part here, this is very much inside playing on an A chord. It's all around that C shape A chord. kind of western swing vocabulary then from there he hits the fifth of the chord slides up a semitone that's my phone ringing slides up a semitone and that's the sharp five so at this point we're playing an a uh, a7 sharp five sound and then we descend this now that that's an A augmented triad. Root, third, sharp, fifth. Root, third, sharp, fifth. But again, that perfectly sets us up. A7, which will resolve very nicely to, to the D. And he, he even sounds that in the way that he plays, because we finish chromatically down to end on the third of that D. So in terms of a, a perfect line, it really outlines those chords quite nicely. As he moves on, what we have is, well, I like, I like to kind of think of this as two sections. You have the first part of the lick, and then the second part of the lick. And the first part is, well, he's began on the third of our chord. Well, that is a minor 7 flat 5 arpeggio played starting on the 3rd of the chord. So if we're in D, we can always jump up to the 3rd, play a minor 7 flat 5, and that's going to give us a dominant 9 sound. So that's the lick. And 
and then we transition positions to this. Now, I don't like that last note, to be completely honest with you, but it's what he plays, so... Ending on... Oh, would you look at that? A. Oh, sorry. C-sharp, the third of A. When the chord changes, we we land on the third. So, um, con uh, conceptually, we have a minor 7 flat 5 arpeggio, and then... Now, this... That's all. That D mix a Lydian kind of uh, A shape or shape four. All fits very nicely around the chord. So that should make sense. Now we've gone back to A, right? Oh, this is a great lick. This is a classic little lick, actually. Not too crazy on the way he finishes it, but this classic Brent Mason type stuff. So we end on... And then we have that is you know western swing 101 again starting on chord tone playing scale tone pulling off to chord tone sliding to chromatic approach note playing a note above your chromatic sorry above your chord tone and then resolving to your chord tone same again chord tone scale tone chord tone chromatic approach note chromatic approach note chord tone so a line like that you could take it through the whole chord it's going to sound like the chord Great vocabulary. Uh, then we have this line that kind of leads down towards our E chord. Not crazy on it myself, uh, but why not? So. It's really just a, a kind of repeating motif. That. Um, And then we repeat the same thing on the D string, which leads us down to G sharp here to hit our E chord again. G sharp being the third of E. Then we have these cool chordal ideas. Well, that's a, an E flat triad. Moving up a semitone to an E triad. Then you repeat the same idea, but in a higher inversion. Typical chordal stuff if, if you're playing on an E or straight. Nothing sounds cool and it's always going to sound like the chord. How can you possibly not be playing the chord if you're playing the chord? <laughs> uh, the cooler part to me though is that little double stop you play there. So you play your. Um, And these two notes, that's the third of E and the flat seven. So it gives you that cool dominant sound. And then finally moving into, well, this is a straight E7 arpeggio in the C shape. Walking down chromatically and then ending on the root of A. So we connect the flat seven, sorry, the root of uh, E down to the flat seven of E via the... Uh, why that D sharp, the major seven, the passing note. Simple line. And then finally, just to finish things up, we have the now technically these are F sharp minor triads. But played against an A bass note. Actually gives you an A6 chord. So that's why they work. So that's the analysis of it. Let me uh, pull it back to 100 percent um, maybe a bit smaller than that. Maybe a bit bigger than that. <laughs> Let's try and play it. So, now we've kind of transitioned into reading 101 territory, right? 
But we have everything that we need to understand this and to be able to play it. So why don't we play it? So counting in, we go one, two, three, four, one. It's a bit, bit too small for my terrible eyes. I'll read it slower. Really concentrate now. One, two, three, four. So we'd have one, two. And then we have one, two. Sorry. Two, three, four, and then. Two, rest. Whoops, sorry. I really need to spend some time working on this. whole bar of rest which we like and then I'm sure I can probably do a cleaner job of playing it like that so let's try again three four one apparently I can't Just, just completely lost it. So, these will be these are the outtakes <laughs> that will become uh, what I'm known for. But the point of something like that is, you know, when I'm learning something like that, I this is this is Andy's playing. This is what uh, let me bring me up on the screen. This is Andy's playing. This is what let's move that out of the way. Andy's playing, and this is what fits naturally under Andy's fingers. These are his improvisations. You improvise the vocabulary that is uh, standard to to your playing style. This is not standard to my playing style but the point is i want to absorb stuff like this and make it more standard to my playing style you will have noticed when i was teaching that there were a lot of moments like for example um here where i play now i said i'd prefer uh the d natural in there rather than the d sharp or e flat sense to me you know my voc my improvising vocabulary is different to andy's but the whole point of transcribing is that you're absorbing the improvising styles of someone else so give it a go andy woods um, everybody loves you well worth checking out from his caught between the truth and the lie cd double album um, great great set of records so do go and check that out fucking subscribe um, and then finally, just to throw out a huge thank you to Patreon guys. These guys all partake in my transcription challenges. You don't need to give me as much as these awesomely generous people do. Massive thanks to them. Um, you can join this for as little as $1 actually. But yeah, huge thank you to these people that obviously get credited in my videos and they get lots of other cool perks. So thanks again, guys. It means that I can spend money on t-shirts. <laughs> That's a good use of money, isn't it? Cheers, Glenn Fricker um yeah so if that is of interest to you please do hit the subscribe button up here you can check me out on patreon down here i mean i've probably got those the wrong way around two more of my videos here and here if you have any questions please do drop them in the comments box below um and aside from that do as the shirt says <laughs>